This laptop is a MacBook Air killer and it's much cheaper. Alright champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. Alright champs, if you're new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train. And if you like these videos, you know what to do. Now you may have noticed that growing trend in 13 inch ultrabooks where to actually put an MX150 graphics cards in them. Now I'll be interested to know if at the end of the year this trend still continues because remember the Ice Lake CPUs will be out at the end of the year and they're a replacement for the CPUs that go in these laptops. You know, the ultrabooks. And the Ice Lake CPUs are going to have much better graphics. So maybe it might be as powerful as these MX150s. Currently now, if you're in the market for an Ultrabook, these are the ones that get, the ones with the graphics card. They give you that little bit of boost when you need it for gaming, content creation. All right, they're not the most powerful graphics cards in the world, but you can play games at lower settings. You know, things you couldn't actually do on an Ultrabook that doesn't have dedicated graphics. And it can render in half the time of an Ultrabook without graphics if you're editing 4K. So I'm a big fan of it. And this is a Zeus's ZenBook 14 UX433. And this one here is a value proposition. And you know, if you're thinking of getting a MacBook Air or something like that, or even an Ultrabook that doesn't have graphics, hey, consider this one because this 1200 US it comes in at, 1699 I've seen it here in Australia. When you consider that this basically has the same sort of hardware as the Razer Blade Stealth and is much more inexpensive. It comes with up to an i7-8565U processor, up to 16 gigabytes DDR3 RAM, which is soldered in, two gigabyte MX150 graphics card, now that's optional, and you can get up to a one terabyte SSD. NVMe or SATA based and it is upgradable through the 1M.2 slot. And even though this is reasonably priced, you're not missing out on the build quality. This is superb build quality. Zeus, I love the finish they do on their lids, that signature swirl, the luster. The build quality is really amazing. Nothing to complain about on that department. It is very premium. This would compare with the MacBook Air, MateBook Pro X, you know, Razor Blade Stealth, you know, XPS 13, Lenovo X1 Carbon. They're the sort of laptops that this compares to. And a lot of those don't have graphics, as I said. You know, it's only 1.19 kilos. That's with the standard display and only 15.9 millimeters. So very thin and light. Has pretty much all the ports you need, except it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3. It's at odd exclusion, I guess. It is significantly cheaper than the competition, so a bit of a cost saving there, but it does have one USB 3.1 Type-C, a USB 3.1 Type-A, and a USB 2.0, HDMI, and a micro SD card slot. So you got a good mix of ports there other than not having the Thunderbolt 3. And just have a look at the footprint compared to the X1 Carbon. And this has a graphics card in it and look how much smaller it is. 14 inch graphics card, ultrabook, thin, light, it's amazing. Now the actual sound is actually pretty good on this for such a small unit. You know, it's got tiny speakers, what do you expect? At the higher volumes, it does get a little bit, you know, distorted. They're perfectly fine for viewing content. The keyboard and trackpad, although they're not the best, they are pretty good. You know, they're a solid 8 out of 10, both of them. And when you open it up, you do get a nice typing angle. So it is actually really nice to type with in a trackpad. There's nothing really to complain about. And have a look at that trackpad. Something special. Look, it's got a number grid there. You can use it as a number pad. You can use it as a calculator. Now, I said when they first put a display on the ZenBook Pro that even if it was just being used as a calculator or a number pad, it is game changing. And it really is. You know, you've got a small keyboard. You've got a number pad now. It's in the trackpad. How awesome is that? And Azusa are the only one doing this thing. When it comes to display, you have two display options. Full HD display. You can have either matte or gloss. Now, I do wish... You know, laptop manufacturers would start making 16x10 or, you know, 3x2s like in the MateBook X. It really does make a difference when you have that vertical space, especially on a 13 and 14 inch laptop. But that being said, nice display, nice amount of contrast, viewing angles are great, 100% sRGB. And yes, it does measure pretty much that. And the color accuracy is pretty good. So you will be able to do some color work on it. 
It comes with a 65 watt adapter and that's why it gets great performance. A 50 watt hour battery and it's good for around, you, you will get around, you know, your eight, 10 hours, depending on your screen brightness and what you're doing. If you're just, you know, web surfing and, you know, watching YouTube and stuff like that, you'll get around nearly 10 hours. It's pretty power efficient as long as that GPU is not fired up. And when it comes to performance, the performance is really good. All these eighth generation Cabby Lake cars, they perform within a bee's diaphragm of each other. Like really, there's no overheating issues here. It won't reach 100. Temperatures are well controlled, very quiet. And there is a silent mode you can use. And even when the fan's kicking hard, it's not that loud. And under load, that CPU will maintain over 2 gigahertz, around a 2.2. So that's pretty much part of the course. And when it comes to performance, actually, just go look at my MateBook X gaming review because this one performs pretty much exactly the same other than it's a little bit better. So I'll leave a link in the description to that video. So, you know, when it comes to video editing and gaming and stuff like that, it's miles ahead of any Ultrabook that doesn't have graphics. Content creation, it's like, you know, it literally renders in Premiere Pro half the time of what an Ultra exporting a 4k project would take that doesn't have graphics so good performance good thermals the only thing you can upgrade is the wi-fi and actually the wi-fi is really good and it's nice 2x2 and actually bluetooth 5.0 so really good wi-fi module in there and you can also upgrade the m.2 ssd overall this market is really flooded, but I tell you what, other than the emission of Thunderbolt 3, considering the price point of this, the performance, the build quality, the finish, it's really hard to match at this price point. Sure, there are other ones you can pay more for and then the story will change, but at this price point, like it is seriously awesome Ultrabook. You'll be very happy if you get it and I do highly recommend it. Enough said. So I'd like to really thank you guys for watching and until next time, guys, Tally Ho.